Welcome everybody to Tower Lakes, the Gospel Trick Shot Ministries. Uh, this is in Tower Lakes Chapel, and with Steve Lillis as our professional. He's the yeah. all right. Yeah, he's gonna do a. There you are. I okay. think he's still going. Is it yeah. live or is yeah, it memorized? Yeah, it's live, right? Okay. Are we still going? Okay. Welcome. Welcome. BTS Rack Rooms, I'll take it from yep. here. Facebook family out there. I got our, my Tower Lakes family here. We're in Lake Wales, Florida. Yay. Yay. Yeah. And the weather's warm. Okay, so all you people up north that are watching, I'm so sorry. That Sylvia and Forster. So nice. Sylvia Fortia is watching. Good morning, Sylvia. Ah, uh, Sylvia. Welcome, yeah. Sylvia. Anybody else come in, you let me know, and we'll welcome them. Okay. And this is Walter Rappelman behind the camera. Okay. <laughs> Now, what we're going to do, I'll dedicate this shot to Sylvia since she just came in. Sylvia, we're going to, we're going to do uh, what we call the, the slow way to rack the balls, okay? Now, slow meaning like personality, slow in making decisions. You know, people are sometimes slow in making decisions. And that's not a bad thing. You might, you might avoid a lot of trouble if you take your time in making a decision. So here's the slow way to rack the balls. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rack the balls right here like this, and, and I'll get out of the way of the camera. I'm trying to uh, face the, my friends here in front. And so this is the slow way in honor of those people who are a little bit slow in making decisions, which isn't a bad thing. And so it looks like this. Watch this. We're going to rack the balls very slowly. Just like that. Okay, thank you. Now, this is in honor of my friends that make quick decisions. Now, quick decisions sometimes is good too, but sometimes it can get you into trouble. So you be the judge how you want to make your decision, slow or quick, or maybe there's a happy medium. Okay, it depends on what the situation is. So this is the quick way to rack the balls in honor of my quick friends who make quick decisions. That's hard to do. <laughs> that's very hard to do. Now, last time I did it, it went in the middle, but that's very hard. And so I'll leave it at that because we'll just remember the message. All my shots have a message, okay? For example, my friend Walter on the camera, you know, it's very difficult to do things alone. Is it not? Everybody needs a friend. Everybody needs a partner. So I have a little shot here in honor of my friend Walter. And... Uh, there we are. And here we are. Here's Walter and I. Right here we are, Walter. And hold on. Oh, I gotta take this over here. Put this over here. Like this, because I don't need the cue stick right now at the moment. And here we are. Uh, everybody needs a friend. And it looks like this. Everybody needs a friend. And it looks like that. And that misses, uh, because you're not perfect. That's the nobody perfect shot. Okay, so let's see if we could do this again. Now, I really don't want to stand here and do this all day, but you're getting the idea, right? That friends, yeah, okay, friends stick together and sometimes they separate. But here's what I call the obstacle shot because life is full of, yeah. you know, sometimes things don't always work out and things get in our way. So I'm going to take and place two balls in the way here. And you know those two balls are going to go in. And... Uh, yeah, sometimes there's obstacles or challenges in life, and here we go. And this is for the camera people. You got my back, but I'll try to get out of your way as quick as possible. Quick as possible, like that. Just like that. All right, now, notice I did a, a one-ball shot, a two-ball shot, and now how about a three-ball shot, because you have to do things in the right order, okay? And I'm going to... One ball, two ball, and three ball. I'm going to place them over here uh, on the side of the table. And, you know, we just, uh, for those of you who didn't have an opportunity to uh, be in the service today, we had a church service here at 830. And uh, I like to think of uh, doing first things first, second things second, third things third. And, you know, being a Christian, which is what I am, it's as simple as ABC or one, two, three. And the first thing that I believe we need to do is we need to spend some time in God's Word, the Bible. We did that this morning. Somebody read the Bible. 
because the Bible, you know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if you don't hear what God says, it's hard to have faith. What are you going to put your faith in? You're going to put your faith in yourself, your circumstances, whether you win or lose on a pool table. Whew. You know, I mean, I've won a lot and I've lost a lot, but when I lose a match, it doesn't shake my faith. It just makes me want to try harder, but I can't beat everybody. Nobody wins all the time. So the first thing is, you know, hearing the word of God. The second thing is we talk to God. How do we talk to God? What's that called? Prayer. That's all. And you know, it could be a simple prayer like, hell. That's a prayer. It works. You know, because you can't even speak. You've got such problems. You know, and I mentioned that somebody heard some of the people struggling today with loved ones that are sick. And maybe they're all they can utter right now is hell. But that's talking to God. So God talks to us through the Bible. We talk to God through prayer. And then we talk to each other. But before you talk to each other, you better do number one talk. Because you can get a whole lot of trouble by talking to others if you don't know what you're talking about. Because it's better to talk about God's ideas than your ideas on their problems and their situations. Now, I'm pretty good at giving people advice, and I get myself in trouble. Because I think I know more than I actually know. So I'm learning as I get older to rely on what God's Word says, and then pray, and then talk to the other person. First things first, second things second, and third things last. And so here we have the one, the two, and the three ball. One's going to go in first, two's going to go in second, and the three ball is going to go in last. And here we go. One, two, and three. Just like that. Damn, thank you. I have another shot here because, you know, sometimes, you know, we have to Well, practice. we got it. This is a discipline I call. Alan Oseno from Quebec watching. Oh, from Quebec. Okay, this is, what's what's the name? Alan Arsenio. Okay, Alan, this is for you, Alan. Okay, there's the cue ball right there. And we got the folks from Tower Lakes here watching, looking on. And this is called the be still shot because we need to spend some time practicing the discipline of being still. Okay, and that means in your mind as well. You know, sometimes we're, we could be sitting and our minds are racing and we're not listening to what maybe the pastor's saying or what God's trying to say or what the Bible's trying to say because we're too busy focused on our problems, our situations. So we're going to be still. Okay, so watch the cue ball, and this is for my friend from Quebec. Is that right, Quebec? Yep. Oh, I went to Quebec City. Yeah, I went on a gospel trick shot tour, and we went to the old city, Right, the old city where it looks like a fort, and we went there and we did it out in the square. There's a public square. We set up a portable pool table in Quebec City. So hello to all my friends in Quebec, Canada. Okay, and here's the be still shot, and this is dedicated to the people in Canada. Watch this. Cue ball won't move. I said the cue ball will not move. Just like that. All right, now I have. Uh, this is a fun shot, and this is, I'm going to take a dime, I have a dime here, and I'm going to take those two balls, put them back up on here, and of course, uh, when we're being still, we have to, uh, we have to focus. What are we going to focus on? Well, I have a dime here to remind us that it's not all about money. Okay, and so I'm going to place this dime on the table right there. Walter, can you see... I don't know if my yes. friends at home, my friends here can see this shot. We can't get every angle. Yep. Unfortunately, we don't have three camera angles. But here, my friends here can see the dime. There's a dime on the table. Maybe my friends on Facebook will hear the dime go in the cup. We're going to jump the dime up into the air after we be still. And, of course, the dime's going to stop for 10 seconds because it's going to be still because that's the main shot. And then it's going <laughs> And then it's going to fall in the cup, okay? So we're not focused on money right now. We're, we have to focus on God. And that's why the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and only other things shall be added unto you. That's like Matthew 6, 33. Right? When we put God first, God has a way of put, giving us the money and the things that we need. Oh, we're not going to get everything we want, but we should get what we need because that's a promise. And the, the things that we need is food and rain, right? We need shelter, we need food, we need, you know, creature comforts, and he promises that if we put it first. So here we go. Here, let's see if we can get that dime. Okay? 
to go up in the cup, and my friends on Facebook land, I'm sorry, but you're going to at least uh, maybe hear the dime, hopefully, and uh, my friends here will see it, and here we go. Oh, no! We missed the dime, so we get, wow. we get one more chance, okay? One more time. I know what I did wrong. I missed. <laughs> so so I, have to, I have to tilt the dime a little bit back. Okay, right there. And the cup right there. Okay, here we go. One more time. This is a fun shot. It's so much fun, I want to do it again. Okay, and here we go. Dime up in the air. No 10 seconds. Just in the cup. Sometimes I gotta be still and not talk while I shoot. And so here we go. Watch the dime. Well, did you hear it? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, we have a shot here that we call the wall shot, and we're going to take four balls and place them up on the table right here like this. One, two, three, four. And what does a wall typically do? It divides or separates. You know, and I'm not talking about the kind of physical, the physical walls. I'm talking about the spiritual walls in our life because what happens is if we have problems with people, right, we don't forgive them. We don't uh, give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, love kind of looks the other way many times. You know, love, you don't, it doesn't see the law, okay? Especially if it's somebody close to you, spouse, right, family, close friends, you know. You've got to overlook faults. Walter and I, you know, we're not perfect people. We have to overlook each other's faults sometimes and to keep our friendship. Both of So we don't want a wall to go up between us. I put so the rack there for you. What's that? I put the rack there for you. Oh, thank you. You got a little help from my friend right there. And so what the, when this wall comes down, all four of these balls will will disappear into the pocket. All right, two ball here, 15 down here, four ball comes straight back here, 10 ball goes over here, and then the cue ball comes back here uh, where the eight ball is. Oh, drop the piece of chalk. Thank you. I've got some people watching out for me because I didn't need the chalk. And so after the wall comes down, and hopefully after the wall comes down in your heart, with whoever it is you're having a struggle with, maybe you need to ask them to Right. Or maybe you need to apologize. I don't know what it is. But you know, if you don't get along with the people that you see, you will not get along with the one you can't see. Because he gives us a test every day. It's people. That's the hardest test. You know, that's the only ones that can talk back to you. They're the only ones that can give you a problem. Right? And so you have to, right? Love looks the other way many times. Love forgives. And so here we go, wall come down, and when the wall comes down, we're going to come on back and have a relationship with this little fella right back here, the black eight ball. And it looks like this. Didn't need the rack. It would have made it without didn't need, it. Didn't need the rack. I know you were trying to help me. I was going to do it without it, but that's okay. And now... We have a shot here. Um, you know, we were talking today in the church service, but it was a song called It Is Well With My Soul. Did you hear that song? By Horatio Stafford. Here's the choir leader right over here. Thank you for leading us today in worship with the songs. Come on, come on. And that particular song, I, 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 this is not, I'm not making this up, but that, when I go home to be with the Lord someday, I want that sung at my funeral. That's all. I'm not going to get into all my stories and all my problems, and I'm sure you have yours, but this particular song, It Is Well With My Soul, was about a man who lost five daughters in a, sh in a ship accident over a hundred years ago out in the North Atlantic Sea. 
And what he did is he went back to that spot where he lost his five daughters. His wife happened to survive that disaster. And he went back to that spot. And God told him to be still. Remember, be still. And he was focused on God. And the only way he could have wrote that song in his well with my soul, no matter what happens, when sea billows roll and when things come crashing in, the only way he could have peace in his life, when peace like a river, it says in the song, the only way he could have that is his focus had to be on God like the dime that was flipping up into the cup. And so I don't know what you're going through today, but that song is very special to me. And I don't know what your, uh, what problems you have, but I'm going to design a boat. I'm going to make believe that this, this table is a boat, okay? And we're floating at sea, right? And here we are, we're floating. And uh, I'm going to bring out the captain. Here, here's the captain. He's the one that calls the shots. Here's the captain right here. And we're going to have a uh, first mate and a second mate. All right, here's the first mate. And here's the second mate right here. Okay, they're right next to the captain. And here's the people that are up on deck. And if you remember the song, uh, right? If you remember the movie, the, the movie uh, by the way, there was another movie. What? There was the Titanic, right? There was another ship disaster. And if you remember the Titanic, they were singing a song to God, right? As the ship was sinking, if you saw the movie, right? They were focused on God and just say we're about to perish. Okay, now we're not perishing here today. But I want you to think of another ship. There's another ship that's called the Ark. Okay, there's the Titanic. There's the ship that Horatio Stafford's wife was on where the five daughters were lost. But there's also the ship of life. And there's storms on the, uh, on the sea of the ship of life. And see, here's us people right here. Here's the captain. And here are the first mate and the second mate. And we're going to sink all the balls because the name of this shot is the Titanic. It's a shortened version of the Titanic. But I want you to think about who your captain is. Okay, who the captain of your ship is if we're sailing. Right? Because that is a name for Jesus in the Bible. Captain. The captain of our soul. Now, if he's the captain of our soul, he's going to guide us on the ship to the storms of life, and he's going to take us safely where we need to be. We're not going to sink. Oh, we're going to leave this earth, but we're not going to sink. It's, we're not going to be overwhelmed. And there's plenty of scripture that talks about that. I, I think one of our brothers in the in the message today, he read the Bible. That song, what was that song? Uh, one of the psalms talking about God's help, right? God's help. You know, the Bible's full of promises, okay? And so here it is. Here we are on the ship of life, right? Storms at sea, which Captain Jesus is going to take us to where we need to be, and that's heaven. He's going to guide us safely there. And so here's what this shot looks like. Come on, people. There we go. Now, there is another shot here that I call deception because life is full of Deception. You see, uh, we have an enemy who's called the devil. And he's got demons. If there's a God, there's got to be a devil. If there's angels, there's got to be demons. Otherwise, there's nothing, and we turn to dust and dirt. And for many years, I was an atheist, believe it or not. And I believe that. I believe that what you see, taste, touch, feel, and smell, the five senses, is all that exists. And dust I came from, dust I returned. There is no creator. And then I started getting into, you know, metaphysics and philosophy in college, and I started realizing, whoa, wait a minute, this is all an accident? How could this all be an accident? And so it changed my thinking, and I started to come around and say, well, if there is a God, you got to show me. And I challenged God as, a, as an atheist, young man, college man, and he did. I won't go into the story. But if you ask God to show you, sincerely, I really was seeking truth. I was not seeking to be just a rebel rouser and an anti-God. I wanted truth. And so I had a lot of professors who were talking about agnosticism and atheism and disproving the existence of God. 
with all kinds of arguments, the ontological argument, the cosmetological, cosmetological law argument. And I was saying to myself, well, if this is true, and these professors are proving to me that there is no God, maybe there is no God. And so I started to believe that for a period of time until, until I started to get on the ship of life. Until the storm started coming. Until the problem, you know, they say there's, there's, there's no unbelievers in a foxhole. Now, I'm the United States Navy. Maybe. There you go, sir. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I was on the USS Austin Amphibious Transport, right, home port, which is off of Virginia. Sarasota. 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 Look at this. We got some Navy people here. So, uh, you know what? I, I always tell people that the Navy did far more for me than I could ever do for the Navy because, actually, I was put in special services in the Navy. And I was allowed to play pool for the United States Navy. We get typed up military orders, sent to world championships. I was the only player, pool, professional pool player ever representing the Navy in world championship competition. And I finished in the top, I was in the top 10 in the world at the time. But I served in the Navy. My father was a World War uh, II veteran. And uh, he, uh, I got all his medals. It's the flag he was buried at sea some 50 years later after his, his ship got hit by kamikaze pilots. So, you know, we have a family in history of military service. I got other relatives in the service, so yeah, I'm, I love my country, and uh, no matter who's president, I'm going to still serve as the people. It's, we, we, we fight for the people. It's the people. Okay? And so anyway, this shot is called deception. Why? What did I, what did I, why did I want to say all that? Because I went into the Navy because I became so deceived from going to college and philosophy and the world system. You know, Pastor John this morning I gave a message that said, love not the world or the things of the world, for the love of the, for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life that has nothing to do with God. See, we get trapped. We, get, we look at the appearance of things and we get roped in. And that's what happened to me as a young 20-something year old. I got roped in and deceived. And this shot is deception right here to remind me not to get deceived any longer in my life, that God is in control, he is the captain of my life, and he's got a plan for my life, and here's what's going to happen on this shot. You'll notice here that the black eight ball is right here, sitting right here. Okay, everybody can see the black eight ball, and you'll notice that all the other balls are all kinds of which ways all around it, and uh, it looks like, it looks like it's, uh, it looks like the eight ball is going to go into one of these six pockets. Does anybody want to venture a guess? Which one of the six pockets? This one, this is a very good, this, oh, this one here, sir. I'm sorry, but both of those are absolutely wrong. Does anybody out in Facebook land want to venture a guess? It's not this one, it's not this one. There's four more. Maybe they want to type in something. Is it, which pocket is it? Is it pocket one, two, three, or four? I'll go that one. One, two, three, four. I'll give them a, a second to guess. Anybody on Facebook land want to take a guess? Yeah. Well, we may, okay. Mary Hewitt is watching, but no. Okay, they're watching. Okay, anybody else want to guess here? There's four more. Three. Three. This one, three? You're absolutely right. Now, now, the reason why it's going in there is because it's very deceiving, right? It's because it doesn't look like it's going to go in there because the pocket seems to be blocked. Good afternoon, Mary. And the other pockets seemingly are open, and somehow the eight ball's going to get in Actually, there. good morning. So Sorry. So the black eight ball is going to go in this side pocket right here. And uh, again, the, name, the purpose of this shot is to remind us not to be deceived by the things of the world. And, you know, that can include even the political and social and economic situation that's going on in the world today. Because either God's in control or he's not. Either he's got a plan for time and eternity or he doesn't. And so if there is no God, which I thought, then he has no plan for time and eternity. And, and the social, political, and economic is all that exists. So I'm going to put all my effort into studying about politics, sociology, psychology, whatever. And, and because it's all about man. We are the rulers of this planet. And what we say and what we do is all that matters. Because we're king. Jesus is off the throne. He's not really the king because he's not real anyway. Because God don't exist. That's what I said. 
And then all of a sudden, I realized I was deceived. And I fell for the big lie. And so here's the deception shot. And uh, watch the black eight ball. Yeah, I know I'm blocking a couple people's view. I think the people at home might have a better view. Black eight ball in the side pocket. Thank you very much. Okay, now, we have a shot here that, you know, after we have a great fall, and, you know, I had a great fall after I was deceived, and uh, so I'm going to get all the balls here, and I, I, I ended up, uh, I might as well tell you this, it's in my book, I have my books here, you can order them online, Amazon.com, go to Steve Lillis, or Gospel Trick Shot, I have some of my books over here. You're welcome to help yourself uh, for a donation of any size. You just, there's a basket there. Just take what you want and give it freely. God loves a cheerful giver, so you're not under compulsion to give, but that's the way the Lord is. So, what I have here is called the this is called the rise up shot because some, when I was really down and out and I fell for the big deception, you know, God had to change my heart and. When I started to read the Bible, remember the one, two, three shot? First, we hear from God, right through the Bible. Then we pray, we talk to God, then we talk to others. So before I could talk to others about my newfound relationship with Jesus, you know, I had to get into the Bible to hear what God had to say. And then I had to pray and say, God, what do you want me to do? And that's how I ended up getting this ministry, because I didn't know what to do. I was a pool player, but I didn't know what to do. God says, well, what's that in your hand? What's that in your hand? He said that to Moses. Remember his staff in his hand? God said that to me. What's, that's the name of my second book. What's that in your hand? It was a Q-stick. He says, well, use it for me. Well, how do I do that? I don't, I'll let you know when you get there. And step by step by step by step, you only, you only can take one step at a time. <laughs> right? You, you, you know, ten steps, you don't know where you, you might go off the cliff. Ten steps. So here's the rise up shot. Because I had to rise up after my deception, and uh, here's what happened to me, how I rose up. This is to remember, when you're down, rise up. Rise up! <laughs> yeah, yeah, and sometimes when you get tired, it's okay to take a rest. You can take a rest and go back. Okay, now, let me introduce you to my friend. Here's my best friend, my best friend. Walter, you're not my best friend. <laughs> Boy, a lot of people thought that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, you are a great friend. But I have a friend that even is closer than a brother. Right? There is a Bible verse that says a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Now, who might that be? That's my friend Jesus. He's not only captain... He's friend. And because he's friend, he knows what I'm going through. And so because he knows what I'm going through, he's going to take me, he's going to stay with me all the way to heaven. He's going to take me through. Oops, oops, excuse me. I got a little excited there. Okay. I'll be still for a moment. That's enough. And now watch this. Here's my friend and I all the way to heaven. There's heaven. Here we are. He's going to take me. All the way. Now, how's that happen? I want to see that again. Walter, I don't want to be deceptive. I don't want to be accused of being deceptive. So. And we don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't want anybody saying deceptive, right? Yeah. Okay, now, I have a little shot here, and you know. Sometimes, you know, if somebody wants to take credit for that and say, man, I'm pretty good, all right, and then don't show you what happened, right, you'll think, wow, this guy's amazing. He's like a magician. No, I'm not a magician. But I do have a little shot here to remind me to be humble. This is called the humble shot because the Bible also said that, says that pride comes before a great fall. Okay? So I'm going to take and put this, this ball right here like this. And I'm going to, don't anybody breathe, balance the three ball, 
on top like that. I'm going to take this black egg ball and put it over here okay, on the table right here. Over. All right, I can see our cameraman is moving and grooving around the table. All right, now the object is here on this shot. I want to uh, somehow uh, pocket two balls. But the illustration, I think, is quite obvious that pride comes before a great fall because if, uh, if we get too much uh, thinking that we're in control and we take over the captain of the ship, instead of Jesus being captain, we're going to fall. And I fell. In my 20s, oh, I fell big time. Matter of fact, I fell so far that it, I contemplated suicide. It's in my book over there. And, 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 this, and, and, that, and actually, it was the Navy that helped me. God used the Navy to straighten my life out. And so, going in the Navy, I can never repay the Navy. And God first, Navy second. Okay? And what happened is, uh, uh, yeah, when I uh, got out of the Navy, I was able to use the GI Bill for my education. I became a college professor. That's all compliments to the Navy. And I had all the benefits. I still use the benefits, the VA benefits for medical. And so, and also it helped to launch my professional career because in the Navy it gave me a lot of publicity. So I, I really thank God, number one, and then number two, that God used the Navy in my life. So I still to this day do shows. I've done shows for the 5th Naval Fleet over in the Arabian Peninsula, over there, 5th Naval Fleet, yeah. And uh, I've been down in, uh, over here in Orlando, they're returning vets from Afghanistan and Iraq, did shows for them. And so uh, I, I'm on call. I'm on the speed dial at Fort Dix and at West Point and Annapolis. So, so if they want me to come, I'm there. And someday I hope the Commander in Chief invites me to the White House, and I don't care who it is. Just invite me. <laughs> okay, so here we go. And so here, we're going to watch. There's going to be a great fall here. And then, uh, yeah. Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> you didn't get that, but you got, the, you got the message, didn't you? Okay. So we'll leave it at that. Now, I got some of my special shots coming up right now. One of some of my favorite shots. The first one, and I have these little bracelets over here. They're called Salvation Bracelets, and they have colors on them. And you're all welcome to help yourself to a bracelet. And uh, we have a black ball that we're going to put right here like this. And we have a red ball. Thank you, Walter. And I need a, an extra cue ball, Walter. I got one over here. Thank you very much. Cue ball, a three ball, and I have a, a yellow ball and a green three ball. Okay, now this is the colors of the bracelet. And what, what they represent is the black ball represents Walk can the people see me in there in Facebook or in yeah. the okay there? I think you're Yeah, I can I I'm, I think that we don't want to lose our friends in Canada or wherever else they're watching. Okay, can they see? So oh. on this point, only if you stay still though. <laughs> only, I'm not gonna be still. <laughs> so anyway, maybe you might want to They can it. hear you when you're out of this camera's is an range. Important message, everyone. To see the black was me walking in darkness. I was deceived. You saw that shot. I didn't know how to be still. I was, I was in the, love, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, all those things that are of the world that Pastor John talked about this morning. I went for the whole ball of wax. I wanted it all. Give me the world, baby. And I got in a big trouble. But I realized Jesus died for me. See, Jesus shed his blood on that cross for all my mistakes, and I made a lot of mistakes, lots of them. And, you know, some religions tell you, well, if you do enough good things, maybe you get to heaven. Well, I realized I was beyond that. No, I was beyond doing enough good things. So I had to put my whole trust in what Jesus did on the cross, that he paid 
the full price and the penalty for all that I had done wrong. And that I could just receive that freely as a free gift. And he wipes it all away. And I become what's called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus according to the Bible. Okay, that means I'm in right standing with God. Because I put my trust not in what I'm doing, but in what Jesus already did, finished, done on the cross. Right? That's the message. That's the gospel. That's why it's gospel trick shot. Okay, and there's my gospel trick shot, which talks about the blood, and now the light goes on, the cleansing of sin. I can see. I know where I'm going. You see, that's what happened. I went from darkness into light. And when I was in the Navy, my life started turning around. And when I got out of the Navy, I started serving the Lord. And he lit the, he lit the, the Bible says that God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, one step at a time. And the light will go on just for that step. Light, light. You don't have to see 10 steps. It's a step of faith. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. If you don't hear what God says, you can't have faith. We have faith in me. You? We're, we're perishing. You know? We're not going to be here. You know? And so the light went on, and that gold, that's the yellow ball. Okay, that represents the promise of heaven. Captain Jesus is going to take me. My best friend is going to take me all the way. And the green, the green ball, it's simple. It's the only thing we have to do. It's the ABCs, the one, two, three. Remember? What's number one? Remember? One, two, three. What was number one in the beginning? I did one of my first time. This is a quiz. I, you know, I was a professor, too. For 24 years, I was a professor at William Patterson University. Compliments of the Navy. I got my college degree. And then I went. I ended up teaching at William Patterson University for 24 years. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Thank you, Lord. But the, what's the one, two, three? The ABCs. The first thing is we gotta read the book, the Holy Bible. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Then the second thing is we talk to God. Right. And the third thing is we talk to Him. Talk to each other. We need each other. Maybe nobody's in this life alone. That's why you're here. Hey, listen, if you weren't here, there'd be no show. I'm not talking to a camera. Notice I'm spending my time talking to people. Now, I'm sorry. I, I really respect the camera, and I love the camera, and I'm glad people are watching. Even if there's one person out there, that's okay. But the most important thing here is people to people, people to people, and that's what we got going right now. And so here it is. That's the ABCs. Green. Green represents growth. Growth. What do plants need? Green plants? Sunlight. Water. Soil. What do we need? The Word of God. Prayer. And each other. Simple. And so here it is. That's a, that's, and by the way, Jesus did the first four columns. He did it all. We don't have to earn anything. He's done it all. And so the green, very simply, that's our part, and that's to grow. The Bible says to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace means it's free. Knowledge comes through the word. So it's, it's simple. It's not that complicated. People make it more complicated than it is. And so here we go. Watch this. That's perfect. That's the nobody's perfect shot. <laughs> because you don't have to, now listen, you don't have to be perfect to come to Jesus. A lot of people think, I got to get it all right. I got to make all the balls. I got to clean my life up. I got to, I, I got to go to church and wear a suit and tie. And Pastor John was talking about that this morning. You don't have to wear a suit and tie anymore. No, you don't have to wear a suit and tie. Make an adjustment, you though. You come as you are. You come in shorts. Whatever you want to wear. And you come to God as you are with all your dirty laundry. Come the way you are. Don't clean yourself up before you go to God. He died for sinners like me. I was dirty, filthy when I came here. Now, I'm going to do that shot a little different way 
because I'm going to make it more complicated and see if this, we can't get rid of this white ball. So I'm going to take and create what I call the candy cane shot. And I have a, a candy cane right here. Somebody asked me before about, I don't know, we're talking about Christmas colors. So I need all the Christmas colors. I need red, green, and blue light, like as in blue lights. So Walter, let's see, do we have, no, uh, I, need, no, I need the Christmas colors, red, green, and blue. Do we have red, green, and blue? Okay, just all of them, even the stripes. I'll take the black. I don't want them, no, no, no. We're out of darkness, we're into the light now. Okay, and uh, here we are. Okay, no, yes. Now, here we go, we got the Christmas colors. And white, candy cane is white too. And so I'm gonna take it and surround the white ball with red and green, green, and blue. Now you've seen candy canes, and they look sorta, of, sorta of like this. Okay, here we are. Did you, do you know the candy cane story? What, no, okay, you know, you've heard this, right? If you look at it like this, it's a shepherd's staff. You know, Jesus is not only the captain of your soul, he's not only my best friend, he's the shepherd, the chief shepherd, because I'm sheep. I'm not too smart sometimes. And I need a shepherd to guide me. If you turn it this way, it's J for Jesus. Shepherd's staff, Jesus. And now the colors. There is white, which represents purity, right? White, that was what Jesus did when his blood was applied. We became pure and right standing with God, positionally, not to say we're perfect. And the red, there is a thick red stripe, which is the blood of Jesus that ran down that cross, suffering for you and for me, paying for all of our sins. Past, present, and future. Wow, really? And, and that's what it means, grace, because you don't deserve that. Now, don't think there's not, don't think, well, I'll just ask, I'll get my fire insurance and receive Jesus. And I'm okay because no, there's consequences to sin in this life, especially. And I know about that. And then there's three little red stripes, which was the whip, 39 stripes that was used to beat Jesus. Because 40 on a on a Roman whipping, 40 would kill a man. 39 within an inch of his life. And so those represent the stripes. So here's our little staff. Our shepherd's staff, our candy cane shot. And uh, we're going to try to make all seven balls. And by the way, Merry Christmas, everybody. I wasn't here during Christmas. <laughs> it's, to me, it's always Christmas. You know, I love Christmas. And you know, you know there's 45 days of Christmas. Did you know that? Did you know, you know the story about the 45 days of Christmas? It starts on St. Nicholas Day, which is December 5th. And if you go by the Gregorian calendar, that's the Roman calendar. Go by the Gregorian calendar and 13 days, that's December 13 and 5? 18. And then we have December 25th, which Roman calendar will celebrate Christmas. Then we have little Christmas in the Orthodox tradition, which is celebrated in Eastern Europe on January 6th. Now, if you add 35 days to January 6th, I mean, not 35 days. If you add 13 days on the Gregorian calendar to January 6th, you get January 19th. And if you go all the way back to December 5th, St. Nicholas Day, and you go all the way forward to January 19th, that's the 45 days of Christmas. Somewhere in the world, they're celebrating Christmas for 45 days. In case you didn't know that. So I did a show, and somebody, when people looked at me, I did it in California last, uh, last month. And I said, Merry Christmas. It was like January 18th or something. You know? <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. I brought a whole bunch of candy canes. They looked at me like, aren't you a little late? <laughs> I said, no, I'm right on time somewhere in the world. And we got a, and we were on camera too. <laughs> and we had Facebook Live going all around the world. And so somebody was saying, well, thank you for remembering that today's Christmas. And so here it is. Watch this. This, this is called the Candy Cane Shepherd Staff. And then I have one more shot after this. No, I don't. <laughs> I, yes, I do. I have one more. One more, I promise you. One more, one more shot. And watch this. We're going to try to make all seven balls.
Ah, you got lucky. <laughs> now, this is my last final shot. And this is one that is very near and dear to my heart because it's very personal to me. And maybe it's, it's going to mean something to you. And I'm going to take the black eight ball and I'm going to place it right here. And I'm going to surround the black eight ball with all different colored balls to, to, uh, to block the eight ball so it can't move. So there's no, it's a trap. The eight ball is trapped. The eight ball is trapped. And I need two more colored balls. And I wanted to share just a little background to this shot because I lost a child, a granddaughter, a few years ago in a horrific accident. Okay, and uh, this child was born in my house. I was her only daddy because her dad hurt. Her real dad was not around at the time, and so she happened to be born in my house, and she was like a daughter to me for two years. And for two years, I got real close to her, and all of a sudden, she was gone in an accident. I don't want to go into the details because accidents happen. But is God in control or is he not? Yes. Yes. And it's, if it wasn't for all the things that happened in my life prior, I would have never been able to cope with the loss of this granddaughter. And so I got the news from my daughter, the mother, who called me as she was about to be operated on to save her life. She was in the accident. And she had the presence of mind to call me on the phone, on the operating table. She said to the doctor, I'm going to call my daddy. And so she called me, and she says, Dad, I want you to know that they have a good prognosis for me that it looks like I'm going to be able to walk uh, when they're done with surgery. And uh, it's going to take some time. But I have to tell you something before they do surgery on me. I don't know how many hours, four or five hours surgery, whatever it was. She said to me, Dad, Ella's gone. Ella's gone. I said, what? What do you mean Ella's gone? Ella's gone. She's, I said, dead? She's dead? She's dead? She said, yes, Dad. And so there were four choices I had at that moment. I don't know if you ever get news, if you've ever gotten news like that. But there are, in my mind, there was, there's always four different options. Okay? And here are my four options. Number one option is I could get mad at God. How could you do this? After all I've done, after I try to do the right thing and now you take her away? After two years of this and this? No, that's not a good option to get mad at God because God reminded me who's in control. Wait a minute, am I in control or not? And then number two option is, who can I blame? Who can I blame? Who did this? Who's at fault here? Lawsuit time, whatever. Let's go find the culprit behind this situation. Right? Third option, get mad at, I deserve it. Maybe you're saying to yourself, I deserve this happening to me because I've been such a a louse. I've been such a rat. Maybe this is payback. Maybe this is divine payback for all the bad things I did. Now, I know I just said Jesus wiped it all clean, but sometimes in the fit of the moment, you start blaming yourself. What could I have done different? Nothing. Because you did what you did. You can't go backwards. So I knew that wasn't a good option, because I knew the Bible says that there's a verse, John 3, 17. It says, for there is now, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And God sent his son not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be Amazing. saved. So God was not up there saying, you idiot. You, what's wrong with you anyway? Why did you, you know, of course this had to happen to you after all that you did. No, there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. So I couldn't get mad at God. I couldn't get mad at anybody else because I didn't even know who caused the accident or whatever. And I knew I'd have to not let a wall go up 
Remember the wall shot? Kevin Lynch told me you shot this. And, and I knew that God wasn't mad at me. This is no condemnation of Christ. So I knew there was a divine purpose. So I chose option number four. And just so I, I want to make sure that you're with me now, I'm going to ask you, my live audience, unless somebody on the t in TV land wants to pick, this is going to be, we're going to call this north, east, south, or west. I'll make it easier. One, two, three, four. Pick a number. One, two, three, four. Anybody out there on the TV land? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Pick a, pick a pocket, any pocket. I don't know what you're going to pick. One, two, three, four. Anybody? No, okay. I'm well, I'll, I'll help them out. I will have somebody from the audience here pick one, two, three, or four. It doesn't matter what you pick. What do you got? Two. Two, two is right here. Correct? Mm -hmm. Two. Okay. So I'm going to put a piece of chalk right here like that to mark that's what you pick. And I want you to know that you pick correctly, that that is the choice I picked. Okay? And I'll show you that that's the choice. Because here was my final choice. And that was to, and by the way, I taught world literature. And I taught the book of Job in my classroom. In William Patterson University. I always taught the book of Job. Why? Because it's the ultimate book in the Hebrew Bible that talks about who's in control. I love Job. Because after everything went wrong in his life, after he lost everything, what did Job do? Trust God. He, and God had to prove it. He said, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I flung the stars up in the sky? And Job, Job realized he was talking to the Creator. How can I question the Creator who created it all and governs it all? And then he repented. Okay? And so... And I noticed the verse of Scripture said all things in the New Testament, all things work together for good, good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purposes. So God reminded me who was in control, and they reminded me I can even turn this tragedy into something good. But it took a step of faith. Remember, God's word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. You take one step at a time. Forget ten steps. God said, take the first step of faith and trust me in this tragedy. Wow, what he did. Wow, what he did. And I'll tell you what he did after I do the show. So here's the number, number two. Somebody pick two, right? Yeah. Two. And now faith means you can't see. So I'm going to cover up the balls. You see the black eight ball in the middle? <coughs> the black eight ball is going to go here. By faith. So here we go. Black eight ball. Here. Got a good view of this, Walter? Yep. It's coming right into the camera. Right into the camera. Everybody can see. Okay, black eight ball by faith. it is. Okay, let me tell you what God did. And you know, my story is not everybody's story, but what God did, he first of all, he spared my daughter. My daughter, and she was walking in half the time that the doctors predicted, and now she's a Pilates instructor. Healed. And up and running. And she's also a dog walker. Walks dogs, has a business dog walking dogs. My Son-in-law, my ex-son-in-law, came back to be a daddy to a little, there was another son that was in my house. My family was going through inheritance issues because of my mother died, left money, house. And so we were not resolving it, but my siblings, we'll fix everything. Everything. And so Took care, all was taken care of. And then my daughter ended up getting married, who's now a father to that son, and they got two more beautiful little girls that almost look identical to the one we lost. 
One pair of blue eyes, little girls. This is Elm Club. Go up here. And so God multiplied, like in Job, he gave back twice. He gave me twice. Just like Job, and I taught that story for years. Now, I'm not saying it's going to work that way in your life, but what step of, step of faith do you need to take today? First step. It's faith and trust that God died on that cross. Jesus died on that cross for your sin. You take that step of faith, and watch what he does, step by step by step. Now, I don't know if I'm preaching to the choir here, but I'm going to pray the same prayer because I always like to give people an opportunity. You know, and listen, I'm just a messenger. I'm not God. I'm nobody special, but I'd like to give everybody an opportunity like I had an opportunity to receive Christ. So I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to say it privately, quietly in your heart, you say it. And so the prayer is very simple. Here's what we would pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, yeah, I thank you for dying on the cross. And by the way, people at home, you're invited to pray this prayer too. And Lord Jesus, I receive that you paid the penalty for my sins. And uh, I don't have to do anything except trust you to receive that free gift. And I thank you that by grace we are saved, it is the gift of God, not by works. So we don't have to do anything to earn it. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've made so many wonderful promises that you'll never leave us or forsake us, that you are the captain of our soul, that you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother, that you are the chief shepherd. And Lord, uh, I just want to take that step right now of faith, first steps, and you'll, you'll light the way after that. And I take that first step to put my trust in you right now. And so uh, I pray that now in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, if there's anybody out there in, on Facebook that said that prayer, uh, I want you to uh, go to uh, GTS Rack Rooms and send a message, and somebody will answer. Uh, you about that praying that prayer uh, you're already online there with that so there's a pastor we have a pastor that will counsel you mentor you and anybody here that's prayed that prayer um, we have pastor John here you can see them and uh, you prayed that prayer for the first time uh, the Bible says not to be ashamed of God you can slip your hand up right now if you prayed that prayer for the first time and back at home, you can raise your hand into, at home and say, God, I receive it. I receive it. And so uh, we just commit it to you, each soul, Lord, everybody listening, watching. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. And uh, I have over here, help yourself. If you want a book, there's stories. Uh, a lot of these, you heard some of us, but I haven't stories and travels around the world. Uh, people on Facebook, uh, Amazon.com, Steve Lillis, or uh, Gospel Trick Shot, they'll take you to the page to order the books. Here, you're welcome to help yourself. If you don't have the books, I know a couple of you might have it. And uh, there's a donation bucket. And we also have bracelets. Help yourself to a bracelet. We have some cases here. And uh, God bless you all. Give yourselves a hand. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, Walter. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, everyone out there on Facebook. Thank God you, everybody. You. Bye. And